Actually, that one took an eyelash. So we're deducting points. Hi everyone, I'm Jody, and welcome to my channel. I'm really glad that you're here today. If you are new, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. I think you'll find this fun, unfiltered approach to women and beauty in our 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. I don't use filters when I do my filming. I do use lights because it's makeup tutorials nine times out of 10, and as we age, we need a little bit more light just for me to see and for you to see. So there is some lighting here. It's not a lot. Here's a quick picture so you guys can see, but I don't do filtering on my videos. I think that's really important for you to know if you are going on this aging journey with me so that we're really not comparing ourselves to one another, but taking an honest look at what is it like to age? And it's not fun always. In terms of filtering, you will see filtered pictures on the thumbnail when you first look at the YouTube, all the different thumbnails. And that's just simply because it's not unlike looking at album covers when you're looking at records or if you're scrolling through Netflix or Amazon Prime and you're looking at the cover of the movie or the TV series, those are all filtered photographs. It's just part of the imagery to help capture your attention. That's where you'll see some filtering, but never will you see a thumbnail that I will share with you if it's been filtered and say, get this look. Because if it is a filtered look, then I'm not gonna tell you on the thumbnail that you can get it. You'll always see what you get when you open the video. That is just, that's just real life. You probably can filter videos. I am not a Hollywood editor. I was in corporate America up, up until about 18 months ago, so I am learning all this editing and stuff as we go. Beauty I've loved forever, but the editing and the filming and all that, it, it's, it's a learning process plus a learning curve with a lot of steep hills and cliffs. But filtering videos, I don't know if you can do it. There's probably software you can do it. I don't want to sound ignorant. There's probably software you can use to do that, but we don't have that here. I'm really excited about today's video because it is the first of our Friday face-offs where we take two beloved products and we compare them side by side. Now, in some cases, these may be drugstore up against drugstore. It might be a luxury up against a drugstore. It may be luxury up against luxury. I'm really gonna decide which products we use based on feedback I get from you, a lot of reviews and research of what is the most beloved product in our age range, and what's a good competitor that maybe we're not thinking of. Or maybe there's two that are people really, really love. Like one that I'm curious to do is the Iconic Nude Lip Liner by Charlotte Tilbury up against some of Nick's Iconic Nude Lip Liners. Like to me, I always question, do I need both of those lip liners? They're both nude. The colors are not that different. Does one wear differently? So leave me a comment in this Friday Face Off or any of the Friday Face Offs or any of the videos or over on Instagram if you have two products that you've always thought, gosh, dude, don't they do the same thing? Do I really need both? Then we're gonna take them side by side and give them a test. In the criteria in the Friday Face Off, we're gonna look at the price point and the amount that you get, so sort of that overall value. We're gonna take a look at the reviews. I'm gonna use Ulta just because it's sort of a neutral. Some products may or may not be on Sephora. Some products may or may not be at some of the department stores. And I don't really think we should use the actual website of the brand to give us fair reviews. So not only am I gonna use Ulta, I'm gonna use Amazon if there are some on Amazon. And I'm also gonna look at Boots because in the UK, that is sort of the Ulta of the UK, if you will. So I wanna just get another perspective, a global view of how some of these products are ranking. And then we're gonna take a look at the marketing versus reality. Now, I love my marketing people. So those of you that are in marketing, I love what you do. I was in sales for many years, so I get it. But sometimes the words are, stretch or slightly embellished. So we're gonna put that to the test as well when we look at these products side by side. We're also gonna take a look at the application, the wear, and the performance. And then I'll give you my final thoughts. We're also gonna look at the first three ingredients in each of these products. Finding products that are clean and healthy and relatively safe is really important. And that level of measurement is different for everyone and the level of what number is acceptable or what ingredients performance into your skin is acceptable varies across the board. So to standardize the way we measure these ingredients is I'm gonna just run the first three ingredients of each of these products into EWG's Skin Deep search tool. If you are not familiar with EWG, it's a nonprofit organization out of Florida and they take a look at, you should look at their 
website. They have a lot of resources, a lot of great stories, some very good blogs on products. On their staff, they have toxicologists, they have chemical scientists. It, again, is a nonprofit. But what I love about the work that they do in the beauty world is you can put in an ingredient and you can just cut and paste into their skin deep analysis and it will then show you how that ingredient scores with all of their data. For example, in the products that we're gonna review today, isodotacane is the number one ingredient in both products. But I wanted to know more about isodotacane. What is it? Where does it come from? And is it harmful? And in their rating, they scored a one. It gives you a brief description so you can see what isodotacane is, for example, and it is used as a solvent. In terms of common concerns, it scores very low for cancer, allergies, reproductive toxicity, and use restrictions. So that helped me feel better about this product. And it was interesting when you start to look at many of these products, the ingredients are almost exactly alike. So what really are we paying for? We're gonna take a look at a lot of that this year. And I will share the scores with you guys. And if you have products of your own that you love, take a look at ewg.org's website and their deep skin analysis. For me, it was really interesting and educational to learn about what is a harmful ingredient? What defines it as harmful? Which products commonly contain this ingredient? What are some of the past health concerns with this ingredient? It's all there on their website and their website is just a wealth of information if you're interested in that sciencey type stuff of where your cosmetics come from and what's in some of your favorite beauty products. So let's talk about today's Friday face off. I love waterproof mascara because I use it as my final coat so that I can just make sure that I don't have any transfer or smudging underneath my eyes. There's a lot of thoughts on waterproof mascara. I have tested many of them here on the channel, but my most recent love and one of the most top rated is the Defensals by Lancome, which is no surprise. Lancome does mascara very well. I think the last time I checked, they had over 22 mascara SKUs on the market. So if anybody knows mascara, it is Lancome. But that Essence Mascara has also come up a lot. Many of you love the Essence Waterproof Mascara, so I wanted to give the two a try side by side just to see is the more expensive one better or not. So if you're ready, let's dive into Friday Face Off Waterproof Mascara. All right, you guys, I am really excited about this. I look ridiculous without any mascara on with the rest of my eye makeup on. So selfishly, I am ready to get this Friday vase off underway. Now I selected these two mascaras because A, they're both waterproof. One is lengthening and one is volumizing. So some may say that's not a fair comparison. One does one thing, one does the other. But this is exactly why I wanted to test these two against one another because my eyelashes right now have nothing on them. So I figured we should be able to see does one look like it's lengthened and does one look like it has volumized. That will help us determine is there really some structure to the ingredients that help them do these things for which they claim. The brush is a big part of it and we'll go through that as well. So the first up we have is the Lancome Defensals. This is 0.23 ounces and sells for $33. The first three ingredients are the exact same first three ingredients. On Ulta it has 4.2 stars and 313 reviews as of the time of this video. Part of the features in this mascara is that it states that it's carefully selected polymers coat each lash from root to tip to help lengthen and outline each lash for superb definition, for which we will look for. And it says that the unique brush applicator has specifically grooved bristles that hold the perfect amount of product for gradual even application every time. It says the waterproof formula keeps lashes from smudging. It says it's suitable for contact lens wearers and it's fragrance free. So we are gonna give this a try. And I have not curled my lashes today, which is another reason I'm excited to get this one started and somewhat over with. So I have not curled my lashes, so we're gonna zoom you in so that you can see exactly what they look like. And we'll apply this one first. I wanted to try both of these waterproof formulas first on their own and then we'll go to see how this works on top of a mascara. So we'll just start right at the root of the lash. I'm gonna do the application exactly the same. I'm just gonna wiggle, was that four times, and pull it out. And then I wanna go once on the top 
of my lashes because I do like the way that look works. So there's the Lancome Defensils. Now we're gonna move over to the Extreme by Essence. Now this is a highly rated, many of you love Essence Mascara. Now there are several different types of Essence Mascara. This is one of the ones that's been not only highly rated from a lot of you, but it also received four stars out of 312 reviewers on Ulta at the time of uploading this video. This is 0.41 ounces, so quite a bit more than the Lancome, and it sells for $4.99. Some of the benefits of this mascara is that it contains carbon ultra black pigment. It has a large brush for volume. It's cruelty free, alcohol free, fragrance free, paraben free, and free of any animal byproducts. Now what I found interesting is the first three ingredients in both of these mascaras were exactly the same. The first one, the first ingredient is isodotacane. And when you look up isodotacane, the EWG gave it a rating of one. The second ingredient in both mascaras is Sara Alba, which is a type of beeswax. And within Sara Alba, there's over 22 different ingredients. So some of those run a little bit higher risk, but still very minimally low, comparatively speaking. The third ingredient in both of these mascara, you guessed it, water. So let's take a look at how this essence works. Again, eyelashes have not been curled. This claims to volumize, waterproof, and there's no other mascara on my eyes right now. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go into the bottom and wiggle. The first thing I notice is the difference in the size of these brushes. Those are significant in the size of those brushes. Can you guys see? So if you're in a hurry, this brush might be better. It's just, it's really big, but you know, it might coat faster. It goes on very nicely. And then to give it a fair shot, I'm gonna go across the top like I did with the other one. It's a little harder to do that without making a big mess because that brush is so big. That's about as safe as I can do it without poking my eye out. Right off the bat, I would say that the size of this wand makes this a little challenging to work with, but that is a very small price to pay for a difference of $28 between these two products. So it's on. Let's see what it looks like in a few hours and if there's any smudging, flaking, or transfer. So here we are six and a half hours later after we put on the first application. There's only one coat on each of these. Here's the Lancome as a reminder. Here is the essence. I don't know that one is lengthened. I don't know that one is more volumized. I don't see any transfer. I don't see any flaking. I don't really see any smudging. I haven't really wiped my eyes because I was too afraid of being unfair and wiping one and not the other, so I've been really careful. And as a final for the day, what I wanna do is take a very clean sponge and I'm gonna see if this smudges. So we're gonna just apply it softly on each side i'm not i'm not pressing hard and i just want to smudge it wow they're both about the same and really there's no smudging on my eyes so ah, 4.99 33 so let's see what the results look like after we apply this mascara on top of another mascara it's 10 30 at night and i was just about to wash my face i was not going to film anymore today but as I was looking at this mascara, here's the Essence and here is the Lancome Defensils. You guys, this mascara has been on for over 14 hours, since 8.30 this morning, all day. And I did not curl my lashes. You remember I didn't curl them because I just wanted to give both of these a fair shot without any artificial lifting. And I'm, I'm so impressed. So far, there's not a difference in the way these two mascaras are performing. There's a $28 difference in the way my pocketbook will feel, but we'll see how these wear on top of a mascara and we'll go from there. So here we are on day two and we're gonna try our waterproof mascaras on top of, or as the last coat of a normal non-waterproof mascara because I know many of you like to wear mascara and then like me, you'll put that last coat on waterproof just to make sure that you seal it, transfer, smudging, all that. So we're gonna use the Lancome Idol, which is a popular one, a lot of you have it, so I thought that's a good kind of test to see. So we're just gonna put this on, I'm gonna do two coats of this on each side and then we'll get to the waterproof. All right, so we have two coats of the Lancome Idol on, and gosh, I forget how much I love this mascara. I mean, just 
two coats of that makes your lashes really come alive. And just to remind you guys, I don't have lash extensions. These are my real lashes. I have used Revita Lash for years. I go on for like three months, take two months off, on three months, take two months off. So sort of an eyelash cycle, if you will, and that has worked for me. But I do love the way my eyelashes really pop with certain mascaras. The Makeup Forever, the professional that I talk about all the time the, the, with the two sides, that small brush on the side, on the first side is phenomenal. But I do love this Idol from Lancome. It is a definitely a it's a great mascara. All right, now that that mascara, two coats, has dried, we are gonna go in with one coat of the Defensals. We're gonna stay to the same side, just so that I don't get this confused. Here's what the lashes look like with two coats of Lancome's Idol. And this is a waterproof lengthening by Lancome, so we're gonna give it one waterproof coat. Three, four, and pull. I just want to try to make sure I'm getting the same application on each side. And then let's see if we get any type of lengthening. So there's the one coat. Does it look like there's any lengthening properties in this mascara on this eye versus this eye? I don't know that I can say I see that. So now we'll try the Essence Waterproof and it is supposed to volumize. I do feel like this brush is, is great it's just big which is if you're in a hurry it's good you just have to be so careful i feel like i'm gonna poke my eye out what are those little whirly worms they're like brown and black they're called whirly worms aren't they i'm sure that a scientist is going to be like uh no there's actually a term for that but that's what it reminds me of on the end of this brush but i love it and you guys i will say that last night taking off these two mascaras I did use, I used coconut oil to wash my face, so I was able to just really nicely, gently massage coconut oil onto my lashes and then wipe them away. It took a little more effort and, and rubbing, but not in an aggressive way, but I did have to rub harder and a little bit more often on the Lancome side. The Essence side washed right off, no problem with the coconut oil. So there we go. What do you guys think? Can you tell a difference? I think I can tell a difference in the two lashes and I will reserve my thoughts on which one I like the best. We will see how these wear throughout the day. I do have a couple other videos that I'm filming that have nothing to do with mascara, thank goodness. And I don't feel a need to curl my lashes today, which is super exciting. So we'll check in and see how these hold up on top of another mascara in just a few hours. Well, it's been four and a half hours and so far both mascaras are holding up really well. Now for the next part of this test is I wanna put a concealer underneath my eyes to see if once you add that slippery emollient underneath, it, will there be any transfer? I did not put concealer on earlier today and uh, I can tell every time I look in the mirror. So I'm glad that part of the experiment is over. And I'm not gonna set this with powder because setting it with powder, it's almost foolproof. So I wouldn't expect any fallout or any transfer. And when you add a concealer without the powder, you might get a little more transfer or the opportunity is there for your mascara to transfer or to leave any smudge marks underneath your eyes. And since many of us wear concealer, I thought this was a good, fair test. I'm trying not to give a spoiler alert, but I'm super impressed with this essence. And I know Lisa, you said I would be. Many of my subscribers in the comments, you guys said I would love this essence. And uh, yeah, you were right. I'll check in with you guys in about four and a half to five hours. I am gonna go outside a little bit, just a few errands. Yeah, not a nice day out, but it's a good day to put waterproof mascara to the test. Six hours later with that concealer underneath and I don't see the transfer or any darkness under either one of these eyes, which means that waterproof formula is holding up nicely even without a powder setting that under eye area, which is really important for those of you that wear glasses, but maybe your skin is too dry that you don't wanna cover it with a powder. All in all, I don't see that the lengthening mascara from Lancome has lengthened my lashes. I don't see that they're any longer than the lashes that we use the Essence on. Now, as a reminder, this is the Essence I Love Extreme Waterproof. This is not the Essence Lash Princess Waterproof. There's definitely some mixed reviews on Essence Lash Princess line, so just know that that is not this. And since this is the end of the day and we need to finish up this face off, I do wanna give both of these mascaras one final smudge test 
and see how they do. But before I smudge them, I wanna give you one last look at how both of these mascaras have held up with a mascara underneath them, 10 hour wear, out in some rain, and without a powder under the concealer. They look pretty similar, $33, $5. So if you're ready, let's uh, let's do the smudge test. Ooh, I'm gonna rub pretty hard. I hate to do that, I was having a good makeup day. Wow. And there you go. Actually, that one took an eyelash. So we're deducting points, Lancome, you took out an eyelash. So there you go, you guys. I think we have a clear winner in this face-off. I have to go with the essence. And the only downside to this is that brush. But I think we all know that we've got a mascara that has a brush on it that we love, that once that tube is gone, you can just switch those out and use that brush into this mascara. And you'd have a really good mascara and an extra $28 in your pocket. Loved doing this experiment. I hope you guys enjoyed it well. I hope it armed you with enough information to make better buying choices for yourself and for your pocketbook. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.